The film which you are about to see is an account of the mystery which befell three boys in Missouri. Originally from the small town of Hannibal, Missouri, Joey Hogue was only a young teenager back in 1967, and at this time he would consider himself a very enthusiastic amateur scientist. He loved exploring the outdoors and even went as far as hoping one day he'd be the first person to walk on the moon. And as he loved to explore the outdoors so much, he heard about a new cave that had been exposed by some construction work near his home off State Highway 79 and was instantly excited to go see what was inside. Though unbeknownst to Joey, the cave had already been discovered and was known locally as Murphy's Cave. The cave itself at the time was unmapped, though a part of a much more extensive cave system. And without even knowing, Joey was about to walk into a horribly complex maze deep inside the earth. And so on May 9th, 1967, Joey would decide to rally his younger brother Billy and his neighborhood friend by the name of Craig Dowell to all go on a small excursion to the local cavern known as Murphy's Cave. The three ended up having so much fun that day that the red clay from the cave was all over their clothes, which alerted their parents to what they were doing, so they both forbade them from ever going again, as they feared the worst, not wanting anything to happen to their children. Though to the boys, they were going on the same type of adventures that local author Mark Twain would write about, so they just couldn't quit now and plan to go back. And so the next day, on May 10th, the boys waited and took the opportunity when Joey and Billy's parents left for the grocery store. The boys made sure to prepare thoroughly though before they left. And they made sure to bring shovels, lanterns, ropes, snacks, and anything else that they might need. Although they may have forgotten the most important thing of all. And that was actual professional know-how of scaling an unmapped cave. Though with that being said, they took their chance and left. It would then be a little later, around 3 p.m., where a bystander would see the boys walking towards the entrance of Murphy's cave. The bystander would also see the boys carrying a makeshift ladder made from wooden boards they would use to in order to lower themselves down the shaft-like entrance. Unfortunately, and tragically, this would be the last time anyone would see or hear anything from Joey, Billy, and Craig ever again. A little later, when Joey and Billy's parents returned home from the store and noticed the children were missing, at first they were mad, knowing both boys had disobeyed them. Though not knowing exactly where this cave was, all they could do was sit and wait. And as one to two hours turned into several hours, their parents would go from being upset to worried as the children didn't return home during the time that they would usually come back from their adventures. Again though, the couple could only pray and wait. As it got dark outside, the parents would decide to go to the neighbors' houses and start asking if anyone might know anything. It would then be at this time that they knocked on the bystander's door and found out that they were last seen near Murphy's cave. The local police would then be called and notified of the disappearance of the local boys. Though it wouldn't be until the next day on May 11th that police, National Guard, and volunteers would all be able to organize a mass search for the boys. And at one point, even FBI agents would become involved as everyone was still struggling to find them. Hundreds of people searched the tunnels of all the nearby caves. Every suspicious passageway, narrow cracks, and even many of the unmapped corridors were all checked. But not only could they not find the three boys, of the hundreds searching, no one could even find a single trace of them anywhere. Even in Murphy's cave, the entire system was searched and mapped out because of the search for the boys. The rescue teams then expanded their search to the surrounding forests, abandoned houses, and old mines, but still nothing. Becoming even more desperate, they began to bring in a few psychics who could claim they could feel the place where the children disappeared. But again, nothing came of it. The search for the boys would then go on for 10 consecutive days, becoming the state of Missouri's most famous search and rescues in modern history. 
As a result, the only clue that came about that might tell us where the boys might have gone was a baby sock near the entrance of Murphy's cave. They noticed the sock wasn't dirty and had obviously been lost there fairly recently. The police wanted to keep it as the only evidence as to where they might be. Although none of the parents were able to confirm whether the socks belonged to Joey, Billy, or Craig. And at another point near the cave entrance, they even found a dried brown puddle of liquid similar to blood. But during closer investigation, only turned out to be from a bottle of fertilizer. Another kind of clue came from when someone thought they saw the boys just on the outskirts of town, just as the search began. But no traces of the children were ever found in the location given. There was also a strange message about a man in a black cloak who was not recognized as a city resident. The man was spotted in multiple places where the children were being searched for. It was like the man in the cloak was trying to hide and secretly monitor the work of the search groups. Regardless though, he disappeared and was never seen again. The police even thought to themselves that maybe the children were buried alive when one of the cave tunnels collapsed. But as mentioned before, all possible tunnels of the nearest caves were checked by search crews and they did not find any trace of any fresh collapses there either. And the last theory of what may have happened to the boys was that they may have accidentally entered a completely new tunneling system that other search crews missed. After all, even today, near Hannibal, cave entrances are uncovered all the time from construction, rainfall, and other reasons. Though each time a new cave is uncovered, it is carefully inspected and mapped just to make sure the boys aren't in there. Volunteers to this day still try to search for the boys or more currently, just the remains of the boys that can tell us something on where they went, but nothing has ever been found to this very day. Many in the town now believe the boys may have ran away to another town, or it may have been altogether abducted. It's now been nearly 55 years since the disappearance of Joey Hoag, Billy Hoag, and Craig Dowell, and still other than maybe a lost sock, nothing has ever been found as even a clue to where they may be. A memorial plaque with the boys' names and their history was placed next to the entrance of Murphy's Cave, which was now immediately closed to the public. Let me know in the comments what do you think happened to the boys? Who was the mysterious man? And do you think they could still be in one of those many caves, still waiting to be found? Or are they even fully grown now, living somewhere else, their own lives, after wandering away, or even being abducted? And once again, thank you for watching. Remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons and turn on the notification bell for more content in the future. Goodbye for now.